Hey guys, um, I had a lot of people give real positive responses about um, the quick and dirty bug hole. So um, I'm going to give you guys another uh, quick and dirty tutorial since you guys seem to like that stuff. And I'm running out of time. I'm sure that has nothing to do with it whatsoever. So today I'm going to cover quick and dirty uh, sandbags. Um, a lot of Warhammer 40k has a lot of World War One, World War Two uh, visual elements. Now, what I'm working with here is called Sculpey. Um, some forms of clay you can get will be uh, will air dry. Uh, some of them need to cook dry, and uh, the time and the temperature will vary between the uh, different uh, different products out there. The only, ones I, only one I'm really familiar with is Sculpey, and off the top of my head, I really can't tell you what the cook time versus thickness uh, and temperature elements. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a hunk of Sculpey, I'm rolling a ball or uh, rolling out a uh, like a log, basically, rolling it out, and then the next thing I want to do once I get it to the di the diameter of the sandbag I want it to be and just use your you know standard trooper to figure out you know how big you want it um, the next thing you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to kind of squish it a little bit the reason that we're squishing it is that you know gravity works and most sandbags are not perfectly round um, and then when the sand starts to settle it, it flattens out a bit and what we want to do is they typically come to kind of an edge seam. So I'm using this round skewer as a method to get it to do this. And I'm just pressing down. I want it to be slightly tapered. And that's why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. I'm pushing down about three quarters of the way, not all the way, but I want to have one side obviously the top and the other side the bottom. And like I said, this is quick and dirty. Um, these are probably about twice the size you'll really need them, but I guess as far as uh, tutorial uh, for tutorial purposes go, it's probably best that I make it a little bit extra big you know you should be able to figure it out so now I'll have something that looks like this okay now I can if I want to be really quick and dirty I can just continue this process and lay it over I'll show you what that'll look like real quick. This is real quick and dirty, but the nice thing is, is that it'll all be connected. Okay? So there's advantages and disadvantages to quick and dirty. Okay? So I crunch it down just like I did before. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to push it down about three quarters of the way down. You can even go a little bit farther. Another thing you want to keep in mind is, is, is try to make your lengths as uniform as possible. If you have a bunch of different lengths, it's going to blow the, um, the illusion. For the simple fact that bags of sand are mass produced, so they'll all be pretty much the same length. Okay, so now, as you can see, I've got my two lengths of sandbags. Now, I want them to be offset. Okay. 
It's a little bit low. We're going to run with another one. How much time do I got? Oh, good. I've got a decent amount of time for once. At least for doing this. Okay. Now you can individualize all of these sandbags, guys. You don't have to uh, to do it this way. You can definitely take it to the next step. Um, and a good way to make sure that your, your sandbags are uniform, line them up against the other one and go right, oh, press down. And go right up against your old one and you'll have the same uniform lengths. There you go. There you go. There you go. And you just keep cranking them out. Everybody talks about how hard sandbags are. And of course that depends on the level of detailing that you're willing to force yourself to go through. I'm going to pinch this one off because I want this to taper a little bit. Okay. And then, okay, I'm one shy just the way I wanted to be. And then you overlay it again. And now you're starting to get what looks like a sandbag wall. See how that looks, guys? Do, 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 do. And the other cool thing about this is, is while they're still wet, well not wet, but until you cook it to get the moisture out of it, it's pliable. So you can start rotating and modifying this a little bit, give it, give it some elements to work with. So your troops can hide behind it, etc. And you can press them down a little bit too. But um, this gives you a quick do 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 do. How to do a quick and very very dirty sandbag wall. You can also take fabric and press it down on your top layer. I don't know if I got, like my shirt's a fabric, I guess. I could probably not get uh, the detailing level here. Hold on one second. Pardon me, guys. I will try my best to cause a fabric texture on each one of these bags. Well, not each one, but some of them. All right, now, if I can get the, the miniature to come into detail, I can probably get the texture to come into detail. See the texture there, guys? All I did was take my shirt and press it down on it. See that texture, guys? So if you ink it or give it a quick dry brushing, that'll help. If you push the bottom up, like about the a quarter or an eighth, just to pinch it to get it kind of close, it'll look more realistic. If you're looking down from the top, it's kind of hard to notice, and you can always take things like bushes and rocks, and you can put things around it to kind of hide the fact that they're connected you know, as if they use the natural, you know, surroundings to help make their uh, sandbags. So there you go guys, quick and dirty sandbags. Tell me what you think. Hope you enjoyed it. Love you. Bye-bye.